All right, kiddos, so we're gonna have your last, hear it, last video tutorial for our sick bank and dimensional analysis unit. All right, so tonight, or today, whenever you're watching this, we will be focusing our attention to CP chemistry review for chapters three and four tests. That's that packet you guys were given. Um, and on this particular test, we're gonna focus on uh, 17, 18 and 19 those are kind of three that go together uh they're a good group to go together and then we're also going to do number 27 and number 30. all right we're going to try to get through five without taking too long i know if i get much past 15 minutes you guys are going to start falling asleep on me so i'll do my best so you guys know the drill have your metric conversion table in front of you have your calculator have your pencil get all your chisel together all right hit pause if you need to go find all those things but get all that stuff together so that you can follow along as we go. Highly recommended this time, since we're getting ready for that test, is when you see the problem, see if you can work it out yourself first, right? And then hit pause, watch me go through it, uh, or sorry, hit play again, watch me go through it and see how you did. Remember if you did it a little bit differently, but all the steps make sense and you get to the right place with all the right units, it's okay, you don't have to do it exactly like me, all right? Um, but we are gonna get going. So we will start with number 17. So 17, 18, and 19 are actually a group of questions that all go together, all right? Uh, and they have that same initial prompt. All right, so I need to get my markers here. So for 17, 18, 19, it's referring to the uh, fish tank, all right? And it has dimensions of 0 0.40 meters long by, 0.20 meters wide by 0 0.30 meters high. All right, and then those next three questions will all address the same tank with those same three dimensions. All right, so uh, question number 17 says, what is the width of the tank in centimeters? Right, we have our width here, 0 0.20 meters. We want that in centimeters. So this is a chance to practice our one-step conversion. All right. So what is our known quantity? Our known quantity for width is 0 0.20 meters. So what do we always do first? What do we do? What do we do? We put our known quantity in a fraction over one. So 0 0.20 meters over one. This is number 17, by the way. Okay, now what am I trying to convert that to? It says, what is the width of the tank in centimeters? So I'm gonna go from meters to centimeters. So step two, after we've written our known quantity, whatever unit goes top goes bottom next. Meters to centimeters, right? Now, I use my handy metric conversion table that you all have sitting in front of you right now. And I'm going from meters. Meters is my base unit, right? So that's 10 to the zero. I'm going from meters to centimeters. I'm going down the table, right? And the difference between those two is 10 to the two. So one, five, 10, two centimeters per meter, right? And in this case, I knew to put this conversion on top. So I'm going down that table whenever we're going to smaller units. We multiply, right? The other way to think about that is it's 100 centimeters per meter, not 100 meters per centimeter. So the 100 or one by 22 is attached to that centi prefix, right? So when I multiply here, I should get 2.0 by 10 to the one centimeter, right? And notice there that I have two sig figs because I know two sig figs there, all right? 18. Much the same way. This time though, we are trying to solve not for the width uh, in centimeters, we want to know the length in millimeters. All right, so it says, what is the length? So we're gonna use this number right here. Our known quantity is our length in meters. So I have 0 0.40 meters over one, right? So my known quantity, first step, every time is to put it in a fraction over one. 0.40 meters over one, and I'm going from meters to millimeters this time. Meters is on top here, that means on this side it goes bottom. I forgot to cancel those in number 17, shame on me. All right, the meters to meters, and then I'm going to 
capability. So the same logic applies as last time. I'm going down my metric conversion table from the base unit to milli, right? And my difference this time is 10 to the third. So one by 10 to the third goes top, all right? Over one meter, and then I get to cancel my meters. And when I multiply and put my answer in scientific notation, I should get 4.0 times 10 to the two millimeters. All right, so again, I've got my answer in uh, two sig figs there because I have two here. It's 0 0.40, that means that zero counts. This is at the end of the decimal. All right, so those are my one-step conversions. Now for number 19, a little bit more complex because we want to go to the volume of our tank, right, uh, in liters. So I'm going to hit uh, some erasing here. And move to number 19. All right, so for number 19, I want to know the volume of my tank in liters. So volume, uh, liters is a measurement of volume. So I have to go back to my initial measurements. So you guys have to think back to your, uh, your old geometry things. How do you find the volume Right? When you know three dimensions, it's just length times width times height, right? So when I multiply 0.40 meters by 0.2 meters by 0.30 meters, I plug those numbers into my calculator, I get a volume of 2.4 times 10 to the negative 2. All right, now I went meters times meters times meters. So my units will be meters cubed. All right, so if you recall back to the, the quiz we took, having our units cubed means something really significant. It means that we need to cube our conversion when we get to it, All right? So whatever our number is for meters to whatever, right? We're gonna have to cube it because our unit is cubed. Keep that in mind as you go. Don't forget that, don't forget that. All right, so we want to know the volume of our tank in liters. So somehow we're gonna to have to go from meters cubed to liters, all right? So what you have to think back to now is what sort of cubic unit do we know of that can get us to liters? Now, on test or quiz, I'll usually give you a little hint here. It has something to do with cubic centimeters, also being the same thing as a milliliter. Hopefully that's ringing a bell somewhere back there in your brain, okay? So I happen to also know, I'm just gonna write this off to the side, that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. And I promise on the test to, uh, that I will have that information available to you, but you need to kind of make that connection. You see cubic meters, you have to go back in your head, oh yeah, I can use cubic centimeters to get to cubic meters because that gets me in my liter measurement too, okay? So that's kind of have that resonating somewhere back in there, uh, ready to recall when you take that test, okay? So now I've got a plan. I've got my volume in cubic meters, right? So this would be my known quantity. I've got this conversion here that's gonna help me figure out what I am in liters. Okay, so like I said, this is a tough one, and if one gives you problems, I, I get it, I get it. But let's attack it. My known quantity, 2.4 times 10 to the negative 2 cubic meters. Over 1. All right, so what I want to do next is figuring out well, what's the next step I can take. I can't, it might be really difficult for me to go from directly from cubic meters to, to liters, right? Some of you guys may be able to do that because you're already kind of seeing how this all maps out in your heads. Good for you, I'm gonna do it the long way just to help everybody see it, all right? So, I happen to know that I can go from meters to centimeters, right? Right, we've done that. So, it stands to reason that I can go from cubic meters to cubic centimeters, all right? So. Remember that little cube rule we talked about? So we're gonna to go to our metric conversion table, all right? And I will find that if I go from meters to centimeters, right? I'm gonna put the little cubes there in just a second, right? So one meter equals one by 
10 to the 2 centimeters. Right, and you get that again from your metric conversion table. Right? If I'm going to cube my units, that means I need to cube that conversion. All right, so rather than being 1 by 10 to the 2, it goes here, it's going to be 1 by 10 to the 6 for 1 cubic meter. All right, so there is my conversion. Now I'm out of cubic meters. I'm going to get that a little cross cancel. It always makes me happy to do that. All right, so now I'm in cubic centimeters. Now I need to get still somehow to liters. All right, it sounds like a different type of unit from cubic centimeters, but because this is true, it's really not that difficult of conversion. In fact, you do it in one step, I'm gonna do it in two, just for doing it in two sake. So there we go, cubic centimeters to milliliters, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, All right? Now, I can cross off my cubic centimeters and milliliters. Now I'm gonna go milliliters to liters, right? So in this case, I'm going up my conversion table, which means my conversion factor goes on bottom, I'm dividing this time. So I'm going bigger units, I need to be dividing by that conversion. So from milli to liters, liters is the base unit, it's one by 10 to the third per one. All right, and again, I can go back, do some cross canceling there. So now I'm gonna have my answer in liters. So, uh, when we multiply this one out, we should get uh, 2.4 times 10 to the 1 liters, or 24 liters. I would accept 24 in that case because 24 is not a very big number, all right? So I'm going to walk you guys back through this thinking. I know that's going to make this video take longer, but if you don't want to hear it again, just fast forward. You can always do that. It's the beauty of these videos. You can pause, rewind, or you can fast forward because you're sick of it. Okay? But let's walk back through it. Here's my known quantity, which I got from my old school math days when I learned how to find the volume of something. Like times width times height, right? That gave me this number, right, that I put in scientific notation because I like scientific notation. 2.4 times 10 to two cubic meters, right? Back in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, cubic meters, cubic centimeters, liters, yeah, that all works together, okay? You'll be giving this on a test to give you that hint, so maybe you don't have to have exactly remember it. All right? So I then went from cubic meters to cubic centimeters because I know how to go from meters to centimeters, right? Which I use my metric conversion table. Meters to centimeters, it's 10 to the 2, right? And I'm multiplying by 10 to the 2, but because it's cubic, I had to cube the 10 to the 2, so which made it 10 to the 6. So that's where this number came from. All right? So now I'm in cubic centimeters. Those are the same thing, so I just did my one-to-one -one ratio there just to show it, right? So now I'm in milliliters, and then a good old-fashioned one-step conversion from milliliters to liters, right? Multiply my numbers on the top, and I divide them by the numbers on the bottom. When I do that correctly with my calculator, right, using that EE -E button and stuff or parentheses to make sure I don't get my order of operations wrong, I should get 2.4 times 10 to the 1 liters. All right, so uh, we are gonna probably take a little longer than that 15 minutes. My apologies, but like I said, you tired of hearing me? Just fast forward, I'm talking too much. All right, so we're gonna move on now to number 27, because it's a hard one, right? So I'm gonna spend my time helping you guys out with more difficult ones. Uh, keep in mind, you guys do have that answer key available to you. You should be checking it frequently as you go. You hate to do a whole bunch of problems wrong, and go back and fix them, right? Because every time you get a couple answers in there, check your work, all right? So, number 27. Astronomers often use the term the unit light year to express intergalactic distances. That can be confusing. A light year sounds like time, but it's actually a distance, okay? It refers to how far light travels in a year. So how far it travels, we're talking a distance, okay? Uh, if light travels 3.00 times 10 to the 10, centimeters per second, and one year is defined as 365 days. How many kilometers does light travel in one year? All right, so let's go through this. What's our known quantity? Okay, we have a known quantity of 3.00 times 10 to the 10th 
centimeters per second, which means I put my one second on watts. So whatever the per is goes on bottom. All right. Next step. All right. I want to know. I want to get so I'm in centimeters per second. I want to know kilometers per year. So I'm going to be converting centimeters to kilometers and seconds into years. All right. Both of which you guys should know how to do at this point. It's just step by step. So it doesn't matter which one I do first. Say no, no, it doesn't matter which one I do first. Just as long as I do them both correctly, right? So I'm gonna cancel them both out and do all the multiplying dividing at the end anyways. All right, so let's go centimeters to kilometers. We can do that in one step. So centimeters is top here. I mean centimeters go to the bottom here. And kilometers top there. So use your metric conversions table. We don't have any cubed or squared units here, so we just get to use our difference on our table. It's a difference of 10 to negative two to 10 to the third, so there's a difference of 10 to the fifth, right? And I'm going up that table, so this is one by 10 to the fifth per one kilometer, right? So again, I know I'm dividing by that difference because I'm going to a bigger unit, which means I divide. My number's gonna be getting small. All right, boom, boom. I'm in kilometers per second, right? So I've got the right units on top now. I've got kilometers. I want to know kilometers per uh, year, okay? So now I've got to go through a few steps to get seconds into years. And you can do that in lots of steps or you can shorten those steps. I'm going to go seconds to hours, hours to days, days to years, okay? So seconds to hours, we've done that so many times. I just happen to know that's 3,600 seconds and one hour, right? Seconds had to go on top there, right? And it's 3,600 goes on the top because it's 3,600 seconds per hour, not 3,600 hours per second, all right? Now I'm in hours, right? So hours to days, all right? I'm even just gonna write out my units over here, and then days to years, right? Just to show that I, I've got that all mapped out in my head now. So how many hours in a day? 24. How many days in a year? 365. Simple as that. Multiply this times this times this times this. Divide by that. And when you do that, it should get 9.46 times 10 to the 12th kilometers per year. And you can get shame on me. I actually can't the dot, right? Kilometers on top, years on bottom. All right? Now, one more, and I'm trying, I'm kind of going fast here. Uh, so you want me, to, I'm gonna go back and walk through this one more time, and then we'll hit number 30, all right? So again, here's my known quantity, three times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second, which means I have to put centimeters on top, the per, whatever, goes on bottom, that's seconds in this case. I wanted my answer in kilometers per year, right? So I knew centimeters needed to become kilometers, seconds needed to become years. All right, and we should know how to do both those things, but it's helpful to write it all out so we can keep track. So centimeters to kilometers, we use our metric conversion table. We divide because we're going up the table, getting bigger, right? That gets us to kilometers. Then we go seconds to hours, hours to days, days to years. And remember, wherever the unit starts with, the next step, it needs to go on the opposite side of that fraction. So it's 3,600 seconds per hour. The seconds is on bottom here, and you just put the top there, 3,600 seconds for one hour, not 3,600 hours per second. That's how I knew that went there. Likewise here, 24 hours per day, 365 days per year. Because all my units that I don't want come out on opposite sides of our fraction, we cancel them. Kilometers is left on top, years left on bottom. Boom. All right. Last one. Oh my gosh, we're getting long. I apologize. All right, number 30. This is actually a little bit shorter problem. Okay, so it says, an automobile can travel 40 miles on one gallon of gasoline. How many kilometers per liter? All right, so we got 40 miles per gallon equals blank kilometers, oops, per liter. All right, that's what we're trying to figure out. So in this case, I'm gonna to have to go miles to kilometers and gallons to liters. Now, 
we're not metric system here. Oh, we're, we're part, this is metric, our SI units, these are non-metric units, right? So in the question, when that happens, remember, because you can't use our conversion table, I will give you those conversions. So if you read that problem carefully, it tells you how many kilometers are a mile and how many uh, liters are in a gallon, or a gallon's in a liter, okay? So what's my known quantity? 40.0, I should write that, miles per gallon. Four zero point zero miles, and hey, it's really important you put the mi there. Because if you just put an m, people are going to think meters over one gallon. Okay, so again, gal as opposed to just a g, because g would be grams, not gallons. Miles per gallon. All right. Now I need to go from miles to kilometers gallons to liters, it doesn't matter which one I do first. So I'm gonna use uh, the first conversion I get, which is 1.61 kilometers equals one mile, right? So we might as well go top or bottom here. This tells me it's top here, which means miles go bottom here. All right, my conversion says one mile is equal to 1.61 kilometers. So whatever that conversion tells you, the number goes with the unit listed on the paper. 1.61 kilometers per mile. Boom. Down in kilometers per gallon. Okay, and I want liters on the bottom of my answer. So I know I'm gonna go gallon here, and liters there, and I just go to my table. One liter equals 0 0.264 gallons. Gallons crosses off, right? Gallons is bottom here. We know gallons is the top there. 2.64 companies gallons here, so it's going to accompany gallons there. Multiply across the top and divide, and I should get 17.0 kilometers per liter, or you could go 1.70 times 10 to the 1 kilometers per liter. Either way, All right, so uh, that does it for today. Um, sorry, I got a little long-winded there, but I wanted to take you through a, a little bit more just to be in right before the, the upcoming test. Uh, if you found this useful, be sure to hit like at the bottom. You just can't, you don't have to hit like, but if you want to subscribe, you can. I'm not going to get any money no matter what, but if it helps you to subscribe and, and make me feel good, Hit the like button, subscribe, and it just make me feel nice and warm right here. Right here, okay? Anyways, uh, you guys keep after it. Uh, good luck on the test. Come see me in my room if you have other questions.